Hi everyone and welcome to European Researchers Night. Well, they say a picture paints a thousand words and indeed images can be a very powerful way to tell us about research. My name is Claire O'Connell and I'm delighted to be joined by three experts who were involved in developing an award-winning picture that shows how effective masks made of different materials can be against the COVID-19 pandemic. The image is called Talking Heads and it recently won Science Foundation Ireland's Research Image of the Year. It shows how microscopic droplets can be emitted through face masks and it was taken using a technique normally applied in the field of astronomy, no less. So maybe Dr. Liam Lewis, maybe if I could ask you about the technology that you used to create this image. And Liam, you're the centre manager at Kappa. What do you do there? Hi, Claire. Uh, thanks. Uh, yes, so we, we essentially use light in all its forms to uh, investigate different research problems and to look at a variety of different research topics. So, you know, we've got projects in medical, food, beverage, all of that. But this particular image itself was, was generated actually in a very simple way. So we use different colors of light to highlight different elements of the droplets that we wanted to see. So by using different colors, which have different, in some sense of different sizes, um, that can show us a variety of different things about the, the droplets that we want to look at. So this was just set up with a, a standard uh, medical dummy head and we used uh, a, a, an expirator to, to show the, the the breathing of the normal respiratory system of the, the dummy itself and we utilized a different number of masks and basically using the light you could see and you can see quite clearly from the image uh, a the effect that using a mask can have but something else that's not that's not hugely clear from the image but we've seen it in our searches we can see as well different traits about the material in the mask and how that performs based on the sizes of particles that can get through so it's a very simple technique but applied i suppose in a very useful way. It's a really effective visualization and I'm struck as well, uh, Dr. Niall Smith, um, how it's a technique that's, that's been developed for astronomy, for looking at faraway stars. You're head of Blackrock Castle Observatory and head of research at Cork Institute of Technology. Can you tell us a little more about that underlying technology and why it was at our disposal in the first place? Well, when we looked at the proposal in the first instance, Claire, because all of these things start with a proposal for funding somewhere, what we realised that some of the images that were being portrayed in the literature show dots. Uh, um, these were really to do with people coughing or sneezing or something like that. And we realised that those dots looked very similar to stars in a star field. And of course, astronomers can't get to the stars. We've no way of getting uh, really beyond our back door when it comes to the cosmos, even not even to the back door. So everything we do is really around measuring the light from those stars. So we measure the brightness, we can measure things like the spectrum of those stars, we can measure changes in the brightness. So really there's been, you know, billions of person hours spent over, over a long time in trying to understand the night sky. And we, in terms of the brightness of objects there. And at BlackRock at the observatory, we particularly focused on trying to measure variations in the brightness of quasars. These are actually objects which look like a star because they're so far away, but they're really a supermassive black hole and there's material falling into that black hole. And as that material falls in, it brightens and it fades and it brightens and it fades. And it's one of the few ways we can tell about the physics of the black hole is by looking at the brightening and fading of that material as it falls in. So we thought, here we've got droplets coming from a mask and can we see, use our technique to measure the brightness not necessarily brightness changes, but the brightness of droplets. And why that was important to us, Claire, was we, we don't really know, and certainly when we started this project earlier on in the year, we didn't know whether the big droplets were more important for COVID-19 spread or the smaller droplets. And by these, I mean droplets that are kind of like, you know, the, a, a fraction of the width of a human hair. So we thought, well, if we don't know which are the important ones, let's measure the whole lot. And we wanted to know how many small ones there were, how many medium-sized ones, and how many big-sized ones there were. So ultimately, that's the, the goal of the experiment, which, by the way, is still, like all good experiments, is still going on. So we haven't got all those answers yet. But in the course of that, we realized that we could look at the brightness of sort of large numbers of these droplets. So what you're really seeing in this image is the combined brightness from large numbers of droplets. Our challenge now, by the way, is to kind of focus in on those and look more closely at what those clouds that are coming off, what are they composed of? Lots of big droplets, probably not, probably lots of small ones, but at what point do they cut off 
and so on. And that's going to be really important for the epidemiologists who are trying to figure out whether a particular mask is good or not, because some masks might allow very small droplets through, and if they're small enough, maybe they're not important anymore. We don't know that second bit, as mostly, mostly but not exclusively, people in the physical sciences in the team, we're going to focus just on, on, on telling them people elsewhere who know more about the medicine side of things, what size the droplets are. And then they can maybe go from that and start to say, yeah, I'm a bit worried about that size of droplets, but not so much about that. So that's not a decision we are, are working towards because we don't really have that expertise in the team. But we're good at measuring these brightnesses because we've been doing that for a long time to do with quasars. So from the most distant objects in the universe, which are utterly harmless to human life, to some of the smallest objects in the universe, which are very close and clearly, sadly, very dangerous to human life. It is amazing to think about how a technology on, on, on research that's focused on something that's literally, you know, millions of light years away can be so useful to us literally in front of our faces <laughs> as the image shows. Danielle Wilcox, you are a science facilitator at Black Rock Castle Observatory and sort of day to day you help people to understand science. So for you, what was it that jumped out from this image in terms of science communication? I, from the beginning with this project, I was so excited about it because um, I also am a telescope operator here too. So I get to actually see those images that Niall was talking about. When we use the telescope and we're taking pictures of the night sky, the images we're taking from the mask experiment look really similar to a star field and it's those dots all over the place. So I was fascinated by this idea of being able to bring Astro into a real world pandemic situation and trying to figure out yeah, bring about information from that. So when I was brought in, into the project and they sent over um, the images to me, I was really struck by all of the, I mean, when I say images, I don't mean just a few. There were loads from the experiments. I had a lot to work with and um, all different types of masks, materials, the way they were on. And um, I went through a lot and there were a few that really stuck out to me. And so when I was going through them, I really realized that there was a real stark contrast between, it was very clear very quickly that uh, having a mask on is very different than not having a mask. And so when I was putting the image together, I wanted, to, I wanted something that would il illustrate that and show, I wanted to be in your face basically, look at the difference between these two. So I flipped the images around and moved them so they were lined up and made sure that they were basically it looked like they were talking to each other because I wanted it to also connect to what people would really be dealing with in an, an everyday situation if they're in a shop or on a street and why it's important to have that kind of distance in between us because you see those heads are not very far away and you can see how much is actually coming out of the unmasked um, dummy head so um, that was kind of where the that image being developed came from. Brilliant and who came up with the stroke of genius to call it talking heads? That was me. Um, yeah, sure. If, if you want to call it a stroke of genius, I'm happy to go with that. I think it was just the first thing that came to me when we when, when we saw it together. And I think uh, Danielle, you know, changing it around that little bit to make them face one another, which we hadn't in the in the original image, was actually th that's probably the, the big genius factor there because, as she said herself, it's very representative of what you see on a day to day basis and how people interact. You know, they do stand close together. Uh, we're Irish people. We talk a lot. You know, so it is, it's, it's brilliant. But I, I, I think even when we started this, one of the things I had mentioned was that the best image is the one that really doesn't need a title at all. And I think if you look at this image, you know, you don't need to be scientific. You don't need to be even interested in the topic. I think you can clearly see what it's trying to portray. And I think that's probably the, the, the greatest satisfaction is in terms of what the guys have done and put together is that the image itself speaks for itself. Well, well done to all of you. Well done to everybody involved in producing the image because it's striking, it's relatable, it's beautiful. And congratulations on the award. Brilliant. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Thank you so much. Claire. Thank you, Claire.